When we started learning music, the first thing that we learned was musical notation. We started by learning what different notes were and how they were placed on the staff. We learned about how the shape or the color of the notes determined their duration. We learned about how silence was written down in music. And we learned how even the slightest changes in speed or dynamics were indicated by musical signs. Learning musical notation is so crucial in our understanding of music today that it's really hard to imagine a society that didn't have it. But even though notation has such a central position in our musical thought today, there's at least 1500 years of music that we can study before the development of a systematic notation. Hello everyone and welcome to Music History, an overview from below, where we follow the story of Western music from ancient Greece to the day I die. The ancient Greek musicians mostly played music from memory or by improvisations, but they did have a system of musical notation. Since the 6th century BC, the Greeks developed a series of signs which were used to indicate musical behavior. The system was a primitive one, so it didn't really have all the elements that define modern musical notation. For example, our musical notation is not only pitch specific, but it also gives us a lot of other relevant information. This means that when we put a sign in a musical staff, we know what it sounds like, how loud or how fast it is, and how it's articulated or how long it takes. The Greek system, on the other hand, was of course not as developed and systematic. The Greeks had two sets of musical signs. One of them was used for instrumental accompaniment and the other one was used for vocal melodies. The instrumental signs are generally recognized as the older system. This system used groups of signs to indicate natural notes and their alterations. The vocal signs were put on top of the text and they mostly indicated musical behavior in terms of relative pitch. Duration and rhythm were often deduced from the poetic rhythm of the text and the length of the words. The Greeks firmly believed that each syllable had to be set to one note. Even though these systems of musical notation existed, they were mostly used by a small number of professional musicians. Even most of the choruses that performed in dramas learned their vocal melodies by listening to the poet sing them. Instrumental musicians too didn't follow a score during performance and they had to rely on their own musical instincts. Let's turn to ancient Greek musical instruments now. Even though we mostly hear about three different instruments, the kithara, the lyre, and the aulos, the Greeks had more than 20 different musical instruments. These musical instruments belong to a variety of families, from instruments shaped like the modern trumpet to strings, woodwinds, and percussion. The kithara was probably the most important musical instrument in ancient Greece, kind of like the modern piano. It was an extremely complicated instrument which had the ability to play chords, harmonics, or even articulations like the vibrato. The kithara had two main types, the flat based and the round based. The round based kithara, which was also called the formings, mostly appears in informal musical contexts, but the flat based kithara was the main concert instrument. The formings was also the older member of the family, which gradually disappeared by the fourth century BC. The kithara was an instrument which was played by professional musicians. Other people who learned music as a hobby are mostly seen playing the lyre or another version called the barbitos. The lyre was played mostly in the same way as the kithara, although it had a quieter tone and probably a fewer number of available techniques. It was the perfect instrument for the amateurs who wanted to accompany their poetry during symposiums. The barbitos was another type of lyre with longer strings, which meant that it probably had a lower tone. Most kitharas and lyres had seven strings, but the barbitos is described as having only five or six. The ancient Greece had a wide variety of stringed instruments. Polychordon was a general name that referred to a family of harp-like instruments with about 20 strings. This family also came in a variety of sizes and shapes, from trigonum, triangular harp, to magadis, an instrument which looks like the modern harps that we have. Another family of string instruments was shaped like the lute. They only had three to four strings, but as we can expect, they allowed the player to change the pitch by using the fingerboard. The aulos is the most well-known wind instrument of the ancient Greek world, but it wasn't the only one. The aulos was a reed instrument, which means that it had a mouthpiece like the oboe or the clarinet. In terms of shape, the aulos looked like the oboe, but it was played using two instruments at the same time. There are many different theories about the relationship between these two instruments. Some people suggest that they played in unison. Some people say it was an octave apart, and some people say that they played melody and accompaniment. 
Most of the remaining paintings show the Aulos player using the exact same fingering on both instruments. But contradictory evidence also exists, and we can't rule out the possibility that sometimes they didn't play in unison. What we do know is that using two instruments at the same time created the sort of rich and dramatic sound that the ancient Greeks were looking for. The Greeks also had wind instruments without reeds. One of these instruments was called the syrinx, an instrument that today we know as the pan flute. The syrinx was an old instrument which was associated with pastoral life. But in the 3rd century BC, a Greek inventor called Tisibius used these sort of pipes to create an early version of a pipe organ called the hydraulis. The hydraulis was a complicated instrument which used water pressure to control the amount of air that went into the pipes. Just like the modern pipe organ, it was played using the hands and it created a sweet and soft sound. The salpinx was an instrument that looked like the trumpet, although it was a lot longer. It didn't really have any finger holes, so it could only play the notes of the harmonic series. It was mostly used in battlefields or sometimes just to silence the crowd before an announcement. Lastly, the ancient Greeks also had percussion instruments. Their percussion instruments came in two groups. The first group, which included instruments like the crotala, wasn't able to produce definite pitch. The crotala were hard blocks of material which were clapped together. They were mostly played by dancing women. The cropazi were a different type of crotala which were tied to the feet. The most important percussion instrument that produced a well-defined pitch was called the tympanon. The tympanon is probably the ancestor of our modern word timpani, but it was played differently and with the hand. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on the history of Western music.